express service. Amen. Anybody Man. excited? Yeah. Man, God is doing something so amazing. And we're just so excited about what he's doing. And so uh, on tonight, we, we just want to say that anybody here love God? Amen. Amen. I mean, Amen. really, yeah. this is a national holiday about love, but our first love was God. That's right. That's you know, right. it it is it seems befitting for us to be here to love on him and to show gratitude for him because if it had not been for him we wouldn't have our loved ones Amen. we wouldn't have our children we wouldn't have friends we wouldn't have the family that we have and so we want to dedicate this moment right now to god and saying god we just want to love you and acknowledge you as our first love you as the lover of our souls, yes, yes. the lover of our minds, the lover of our spirit, the lover of everything that we could possibly be. Father, you are the lover of even the foolish things. Oh God, you can see past all of that that's in us, yes. that's not like us, and you can still love us. Yes. And for that, we are grateful. You're not like man, oh God, that when when, when they see things that are crazy and, 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 and evil or and, and they just don't want to have anything to do with us. God, you still love us. No matter what. You said in your word that nothing could separate us from the love of God. That's right. And we thank you that even our mistakes, even the situations of our past, even the confusion, even the insecurities, the fears, the doubt, the low self-esteem. God, you said nothing will separate us from your love. And we are so grateful for that right now. So Lord, it's not about a day or even a moment. It's about acknowledging you as our first love as a lifestyle. And that's what we want this to be about. A lifestyle of loving you. A lifestyle of surrendering to you. A lifestyle of honoring you. And being in your presence. So on tonight, oh God, we ask that you have your way. Move mightily. Speak profoundly. Touch like never before. Let your glory and your spirit fill this place. It's in the mighty, awesome name of Jesus we pray. Somebody say amen. Amen, amen, amen. We're going to go ahead with our praise and worship on tonight. Amen. Amen. Anybody want to praise the Lord? Amen. I just want to praise you. Come on and sing. Forever. Blessings and 
that Lord their hands are blessed they're anointed to take care of these children whether it's teachers we don't know if it's teachers or administrators that are involved as well but whomever it is oh God let your hands touch them in this hour Father we know that the prayers of the righteous avail it much and we speak that our prayers are availing in this hour in this moment oh God we just speak it now we speak it now. We declare it now. We believe it now. Have your way right now, oh God, in the name of Jesus. Have your way right now, oh God. Because, Lord, we can only think, what if that was our child? What, was, what if that was our children, oh God, who were affected by something like this? So we cry out on behalf of the parents right now to heal their babies, oh God. for 
no reason. Oh God, let that person be captured. Father, don't let them continue to go around and killing people and bringing harm and danger to them. But Lord, let justice fall. And Lord, at the same time that justice falls, oh God, deal with the mind and the heart of the person that is doing this. Oh God, bring deliverance to them. Bring breakthrough to them. Bring wholeness to them. Let them sit at, the, at your feet and know that you are good and that you are God and that you've never left them nor forsaken them, even though they have forsaken you. Oh God, let them know that yet you are with them in this moment, in this season, in this hour. You are with them, oh God. celebrating a love day or what's supposed to be a love day but there's still so much hate in this world there's still so much prejudice there's still so much anger there's still so much unforgiveness but yet we say we love people yet we say we love you but we have so much bitterness in our hearts so much rejection so much anger so much pollution father i'm praying for the hearts of the people all over the world for their hearts to be cleansed for their hearts to be purified for them to be made righteous oh god i am praying for hearts that have been broken by loved ones oh god hearts that have been broken trust that has been stolen well some people are celebrating love there are some people that are broken there are some people that are hurt or hurting and waddling in tears and waddling in pain and waddling in frustration of infidelity and, and unforgiveness and bitterness and oh God there are people out there that are struggling with love oh God help them help them to love as you tell us to love you said love the Lord God with all your heart and with all your mind that's the first commandment and then it was to love our neighbors as ourselves Father, we can't love people the right way if we don't understand how to love you. If we don't understand how to love our neighbor. If we don't understand how to love ourselves. How can we celebrate love the right way when we forget the first love? How? How can it be real? How can it be authentic? Father, help people to understand what it really means to love somebody. Lord, love is about sacrifice. Love is about letting go and, and letting God. Love is about surrenderance. And Lord, some people are loving the wrong way. Teach us how to love like you would have us to love. Teach us how to be how you would have us to be. Lord, help men all over the world to understand what it means and what it looks like to love their wives like Christ loved the church. Help them to understand what that looks like, oh God. Even if they were never taught, even if they had a bad example of love, even if they had no one to look to for that example, for that guidance, oh God, I ask that you help them. Help them as the heads to understand what it really, really means to love their wives. And for the hard truth, is that they'll love their wives more than they love anybody else, including their children. And the only person that they love more is you. God, this thing called love can be so confusing for so many people. Help us to understand what that means. Help us to understand what that looks like. Help us to understand, oh God. And these women that are broken, that have been abused and misused and mistreated, oh God. And they don't understand how to love themselves. They don't understand what it looks like to have a real man to love them. Deal with their hearts right now, oh God. Show them what it is to really and truly be loved. When mama didn't love them, when daddy didn't love them, when they were abused and molested by family members, oh God. They don't understand what true, genuine love looks like. Oh God, we're going to pray for them right now. Our hearts go out to them. 
because whether we know it or not, we're praying for our sisters, we're praying for our cousins, our aunties, our, our family members, our best friends that we don't even know what they've been what they've gone through. Oh God, we are praying right now in the name of Jesus. Right now in the name of Jesus. Right now in the name of Jesus. God, there is a woman right now who's in an abusive relationship. But she's holding on to it because it's all she knows. It's all she got. And it is what it is. But Father, I pray right now that if she hears this prayer on tonight, that she hears that her deliverance is here. That it is time, oh God, for her to love herself like never before. And to leave the very thing that's trying to kill her. Father, I pray for the woman right now who's being prostituted. Oh God, give her the strength to walk away. I pray for the woman right now who is drinking and smoking to drown out everything that she's been through. All the hurt, all the tears, all the pain. I'm praying for that woman right now. Father, I'm praying for the man that has been molested. walking in confusion as to who he is and what his call is. I'm praying for that man that he understands that there was a love and he understands that that should not cause him to go a way that's different, that's contrary to what you would have for his life. Father, I'm praying for that man who didn't have a father to show him what it looked like to be a real man. What it looked like to love him, to support him, to be there for him. I'm praying for that insecure man right now in the name of Jesus. I'm praying, oh God, that that man, despite not having been loved the right way by his father, will have people in his life to show him what it looks like to be loved for real. I'm praying for that man. Because we need that man to rise up and be the head. We need that man to rise up and speak life into his wife. We need that man to rise up and speak life to his children. We need that man to understand that just because daddy didn't do it, that don't mean that he can't do it. That he can't to understand that he can love the right way just because daddy cheated and stepped out and hung out all times of the night and wasn't really supportive to the children that does not mean that he has to be that way father this is a day about love and so many people don't know how to love because of what they've been shown in the past they don't know how to tap into another realm of love but Lord, let them understand that the key is tapping into another realm of you and loving you. And the more that they love you, the more they can love their wives, the more they can love their children, the more they can love their neighbors, the more they can love themselves. We're praying for more love on tonight. To feel this atmosphere, to feel this world, to feel this nation. We're praying for it right now in the name of Jesus. Oh God, we need more of your love. Agape love. Oh God, help us to love. Help us to love even the unlovable. The people that wronged us in any kind of way. The people that misused us and abused us. Help us to love them. Help us to love the ones that came against our children. That came against our family. That messed with our finances. Help us to love them. Help us to love. 
help us to love. Help us to surrender our hearts to you. And right now, oh God, we say our heart is yours. We want you to cleanse it right now. Cleanse it of impurities. Cleanse it of unforgiveness. Cleanse it of bitterness. Cleanse it of doubt and insecurities. Cleanse it, oh God. Cleanse it. So that we can be whole. And we can love the right way. Yeah. Father, we admit that we've made mistakes in the past in loving people. Especially the ones that's closest to us. We make mistakes and we didn't love them the right way. But as we mature in you and grow stronger in you, we understand what it means to really love somebody. Even when they seem unlovable. Even when they don't support. Even when they don't show love. Even when they don't show appreciation. Even when they don't show gratitude. Even when they don't even show love back. Realized that it never was about them loving us, but it was about us loving you, and in return, loving them no matter what. Help us with love tonight. And Father, we could have prayed about anything else on tonight. We could have prayed about the nation wars and the rumors of wars. We could have prayed about it. So much that's going on. But since this nation wants to call this a love day, we're going to pray about love. Because that's what this nation is lacking. It's lacking a lot of love. From the White House, to the churches, to the homes. It's lacking love in the schools, and all the systems. We just want to pray for more love. Your kind of love. Not our kind of love. But yours, oh God. So help us on tonight. To be better lovers. We want to be better lovers, oh God. Lovers of you. Lovers of ourselves. And lovers of our neighbors. That's what we're praying for. to love harder is if you love God stronger. And you will see your love level, the ability to give love, go to another level. It all starts this vertical thing, relationship with God. It all starts there. I've learned over the years that you know, people that have wronged me, people that have not supported people. You know, you could be petty and be like, well, I don't like them no more. Well, I don't want them no more. I hate them. I can't stand them. You could be petty. I think that's the right word. And 
and have your attitudes and do all of this stuff. But one thing I've learned is that when you love God, like, like really, really hard, there's just some things you can't do. Even when you want to hate, you can't hate. Even when you want to cuss them out, you can't. Even when you want to go and do the same thing that they did to you just to get back all that get back spirit, you can't. And it really has nothing to do with them. But it has everything to do with God. Like, God, I, I, I want to do it. You can vent to God and you can talk to him about it. Like, God, I really, really want to get out. I really want to do this. I really want to do that. And God will be like, yeah, it's okay. I got this. You just calm down. I've learned over the years that the more that I love God, the less that I care about going off and hating and, 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 and getting back. I don't even care about that. Because you make up in your mind that no matter what, you choose to love. Because you choose God. And it's all about your relationship with him. Amen? Amen. Do y'all agree with that? Amen. I, I, I challenge you, I challenge me, that this year, let's go to another level of loving God. So that we can love those that seem unlovable. Amen. Well, we've been talking about relationships, and this has been a phenomenal time in, in, in dealing with that. And I'm going to call up the woman of God. Minister Shandrika Cook to come forward again. I'm going to get her to come on up and give us a, a powerhouse word on relationships. See what the Lord has put in her for such a time as this. Amen. today um so today was a monumental multimental mental multi -mental day for me because today was my last day so i am free so i'm officially um yes i'm officially finished with the assignment there so i'm so excited and um I'm just so excited. So my topic for today is, can we pray first? Because, y'all, I just got through all the traffic. I ain't never, it ain't never took me an hour to get to church. And I'm feeling some type of way about that. But, so let's pray. Father, right now, in the name of Jesus, God, we honor you. We bless you. We give you thanks, God. For we know that everything that goes on in our life has a time and purpose for you, oh God. We thank you even now, God, that your, your presence is made real. God, that you speak through me. You stand in me through your Holy Spirit. And God, what I say, God, should bring a challenge in the lives of your people, whether on Facebook or whether in the presence of the sanctuary. God, we thank you right now. God, that it will echo in our hearts, God, that it will cause us to go into another level of excellence in our relationships. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 So, as uh, Prophet Trish was saying, we've been talking about relationships and the excellence of relationships, all right? We, this is the year of excellence. <laughs> So we're trying to go to a whole new level of essence. And so I was really praying because I know we're in this relationship series. It's February. We're in relationship series. So I just like, okay, God, what do we need to talk about? What are some things that we need to talk about when it comes to relationships? And I was just like, okay, God, I know what we need to talk about. We need to talk about the relationships we don't want to talk about. Okay. And that's our, um, the relationship of loneliness. So I'm single and it's Valentine's Day and um, actually I've had for the first time in being divorced, I have had this positive attitude about Valentine's Day. Amen. And I have called this the day of love because I realized that while the world is taking notice of love, let me take advantage of being able to minister love to them. So many times I realized that 
during the holidays, that's the best time to minister whatever that holiday means to that person. Why? Because we're so open to that person. So today I want to talk about you are meant to do life alone. The relationship you try to avoid, okay? So a lot of times we try to do life alone. I mean, I look at my life and I'm an only child. I'm divorced. Uh, so I have no kids. So I'm good at doing life by myself. Just perfect. Because why? I came in the world by myself. I don't have a sibling. I don't have that sister, brother, cousin relationship. So a lot of times, there are times where I just do things by myself. But I was convicted by a scripture found in Ecclesiastes 4 and uh, 4, 9 through 12. And we can put that up. I think I've downloaded that. Um, it's the NLT version. And it says, you got it? And it says, two people are better off than one. For they can help each other succeed. If one person falls, the other one can reach out and help. But someone who falls alone is in real trouble. Likewise, two people lying close together can keep each other warm. But how can one be warm alone? A person standing alone can be attacked and defeated. But two can stand back to back and conquer. Three are even better. For a triple braided cord is not easily broken. So I know y'all like, what does that mean? That simply means that we're not, God is saying to us in that particular scripture, we can't even do life alone. Mm -hmm. If we do life alone, we in trouble. It says in verse 10, if one falls, the other can catch, catch or can reach out and help. But someone who falls alone is in real trouble. Because who's going to catch you? If you're doing life alone, who's going to catch you? Who's going to be accountable for you? Who's going to know when you need to shift to another level? Who's going to be the person who gets you to a place to get you back into the mindset where God needs you to be? Because when you fall, you fall by yourself, guess what? That's the greatest time for the enemy to come in and whisper in your ear. That's when the spirit of depression and suicidal ideation, that's when loneliness starts to creep in because of that. And being a counselor, being in, in therapy, today is the biggest day for suicide ideations. So people are thinking suicide. People are depressed. Anxiety levels are high. Why? Because I don't meet the stereotype of what today means. I don't have anybody who loves me. So therefore, I don't meet the criteria to even celebrate today. So a lot of times, we feel alone because we don't meet the criteria of the world when God is saying it doesn't matter. Amen. What the world criteria is, Amen. you're not meant to do yeah. life alone. Yeah. And so many times we choose to do life alone only because we don't meet the criteria that the world has. But God is saying that's not the criteria he set forth. Amen. So I want to talk about four types of relationships that we find ourselves involved in. The first one is the one-sided relationship. And I'm sure all of us have had um encounters with the one side of relationship and and it's going back to even what prophetess trish said she doesn't even know but she was all up in my message when she said something about the cross it says i it says we, we want the vertical relationship but we don't want the horizontal one so i want this relationship between me and god but i don't want no relationship between me and my brothers and sisters I want this relationship because it's easy. I ain't got to, I don't have to see God face to face physically. But with these people, I got to see them physically face to face. I got to have interaction with them. I have to make sure that I'm in contact with them and I'm held accountable with them. But with this relationship, it comes and goes. Because I ain't got to face his heart. I don't have to face his emotions physically. So John 13 and 35 says, and I don't even remember what version it says, by this, everyone would know that you are my disciples if you love one another. So in order to reflect the characteristics of Christ, we are Christian, which means we are Christ-like, we have to have this horizontal relationship fixed. 
And it says, and so the second one is, I'll pray, but God, I'll have time to wait and listen to what you got to say. Mm. God, I ain't got time. That's just still that one side. Okay, so we got, we cool with this vertical, but even this vertical is one sided. Because God, I'll tell you all my petitions. I'll tell you the supplications of my heart. But I ain't got time to sit here quietly and listen to what you got to say in response to what I just prayed about. So 1 Corinthians 4 and 5, and this is the International Standard Version. It says, therefore, stop judging prematurely before the Lord comes. For he will bring the light what is now hidden in darkness and reveal the motives of your heart. Then each person will receive his praise from God. So me not having that silent time means that I don't give God the time to expose the things that are in the dark. Mm -hmm. I don't give time for God to give me the wisdom so I don't prematurely judge something based upon my emotions. Because you know we get emotional in prayer. I don't know about y'all, but I get emotional in prayer. My emotions be all through my prayers. Always. And don't, and don't let me have had a bad day the day before. I'm emotional through my prayers. And so because of this, we find ourselves in these one-sided relationships. We find ourselves wanting to talk to God but not listen. And we find ourselves avoiding this horizontal relationship. But can I get a revel? Let me give you the revelation I had about the cross. Jesus stretched his arms out wide first before he looked up to the Father. Meaning he severed the ties, the, di the dysfunction of the horizontal relationship before he, he got to a place where he knew to go to the Father and service that relationship. His whole goal was to come and Fix the horizontal relationship so that the vertical relationship could be lined up. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. But so many times we forget that. And I think about the song. They stretched him wide. He hung his head for me. He died. That's love. So they stretched him wide. That means he did the vertical part before he even was able to even connect with the horizontal. Amen. But so many times we want this one side of relationship, whether it be with our brothers and sisters. Or whether it be with God. The second relationship we have is the selfless act relationship. I'll take the risk despite the cost. And I think there are very few people who operate in this relationship. Why? Because it makes a risk that has to come with it. And it comes with a cost that we may not be able to, to even pay. So I love this verse and I actually use this verse when I got married, and it's Ruth, um, the first chapter, the 16th through the 17th verse. This is the Message Bible version. It says, but Ruth said, don't force me to leave you. Don't make me go home. Where you go, I go. And where you live, I live. Your people are my people. Your God is my God. Where you die, I'll die. And that's where I'll be buried. So God help me. Not even death itself is going to come between us. Mm -hmm. Ruth took the risk of going to a, So let me give you a background. So Naomi was her mother-in-law. And Ruth was married to one of her sons. And in that, Ruth was in a place where she felt alone. Now, Naomi had two daughters, daughter-in-law, or daughter in love, that's what I like to call them. And Opal, she told Opal, okay, you know what? Thank you for saying goodbye. I, you know, I love you. Keep it moving. You, and Opal's like, 